<laughs> All right. So anyhow, we missed something. I don't know exactly where we stopped, but we're talking about tongues. We're talking about signs. We're talking about the Jews. First Corinthians one twenty two require a sign. The Jews do, not the Gentiles. They seek it because God started them out with signs, as we said back with Moses in the beginning. When God gave him those signs, he speaks about signs that he gave them to go tell Pharaoh. He had a sign of that rod turning a serpent, the sign of his healing of his leprosy, the sign of the tongue through Aaron. All these signs and miracles and wonders were started with the Jews, and they've been looking for them ever since. They require it. Amen. Now look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22. They require a sign. This is very good. You just need to read your Bible to fix it all. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. So it's very clear. 1 Corinthians 1, 22. The Jews require signs. And the Greeks seek out the wisdom. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Anybody got it? Look at this right here. It's very clear. It blows people's mind. I don't know why they just don't read. Good old English should fix a lot of things. Now look, verse 22. Wherefore the tongues are for what? Now, I don't know how much clearer you can get in that. Tongues are for a sign. All right? <laughs> Let's ask the obvious question. The Jews required a sign. Tongues are for a sign. So who are tongues for? They're for Jews. That's simple. The Jews required a sign. The Bible made it very clear in the same book. Thirteen chapters later, same verse. Hey, man, like God said, I don't want you to miss it, you know. The Jews require a sign, and the tongues are for a sign. Now look at the rest of that verse, verse 22. Wherefore the tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but them that believe not. It's for unbelievers. How about that? It's not for those that believe, it's for unbelievers. Tongues. People say, well, I spoke in tongues and somebody interpreted and, and we, we had a good old time at church. Well, which one of y'all was lost? I mean, who was lost there that got help out of? It's for unbelievers. Amen. Hey, and it's for the Jews. Which one of them was a Jew? Wasn't any a Jew in the whole building? Amen. Hey, you might want to line up your doctrine with the Bible and stop trying to practice things that are not biblically. He said that wherefore the tongues are for a sign, not for them that believe. And you get all this. And we spend a little more time on this truth because you need to get it because we've been to go somewhere and show some things about tongues. The Jews require a sign. The tongues are for a sign. Amen. Uh, for the, for, uh, not for them that believe, but for them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. Proclaim the truth. Preach the word of God. Tell what God says. Prophesy. Amen. What the book says about the future. Now, there's tongues. We're talking about five transitions, four turns, three things taught, law, faith and works, and faith only, which is what is today. Now, these tongues. Amen. Acts chapter number two. Let's look at this first instance of tongues. Back to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number two. Amen. We say two tongues because two of them are, regards, are connected with somebody's salvation. This first one has nothing to do with anybody's salvation. Acts chapter number 2. Other than the great multitude to get saved through uh, Peter's preaching here in Acts chapter 2. But it doesn't say about somebody that gets saved, then they speak in it. Acts chapter number 2, he kind of lays the foundation of tongues. Look at your Bible. Acts 2 verse 1. And when the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of... A mighty wind, as of, the likeness of. A and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Look, verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. It wasn't fire, it was like as, a similitude of. That's the words that God uses, as of. People say, well, we got, we got the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, and they take that thing over there in Matthew chapter number 3, where the Bible talks about Jesus will baptize you with fire. And with the Holy Ghost. You're either going to get heaven or hell. That's the fire he's talking about. Amen. The Holy Ghost is being saved and hell is the fire. And they, and they try to compare that with the, in this Acts chapter 2 verse 3. We got the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now that you take the scriptures don't even match. That's a, like as a fire. It wasn't a literal fire. If you get literal fire you get hell. Matthew chapter 3. Anyhow verse 4. And notice, they, they, they're clothed in tongues like as fire. And it's set upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. This is what people say. You've got to get the Holy Ghost. You get tongues. Look. 
They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Look, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. The, the tongues for the Jews. So we got the scenario set up here. The Jews are there. Amen. The tongues are showing up. Look, verse number 6. Now when there was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. What are they confounded about? Because there's tongues. These Jews are hearing tongues and everybody's confounded. And look, what are they confounded about? And were confounded because that every man heard them in his own language. There's people gathered all the way around from all these devout nations. They've come to this one place. Peter gets up there to preach. And he preaches in a tongue because there's Jews there and everybody hears their own language. Why well, ain't that a mystery? You know what a tongue is? This is going to shock you. The Bible says it's a language. People think, well, I said Honda and Suzuki and Yamaha and yada yada. That ain't a tongue. The Bible says they were speaking in tongues and they heard their own language. Matter of fact, the miracle was not the mouth. The miracle was the ear. They heard. All these other people spoke different languages. Peter got up and preached one language in a supernatural tongue and everybody heard their own language. What a mystery. Why? Because there were Jews there that required it. Amen. And guess what? There's unbelievers there. They're showing these unbelievers that, hey, God's about to do something here and he's about to save a whole bunch of them. It was for the unbelievers. Look in verse number 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, he begins to interpret what he just said. Are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? Language, which has just been interpreted in verse 6, wherein we were born. Ain't anybody hear nothing crazy. They heard their own language. They heard the tongue. From the Jews preaching to all those that are gathered around so unbelievers can believe on God. Look in verse, he, then he gives a list who's all there. The Parathans and the Medes and all the way down to verse number 10. Uh, the, the, the Pamphylia and, and Egypt and Lydia. Down look in verse number 11. Cretes and Arabians do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Verse 6 and verse 7 make it very clear. They heard their own language. They heard they were speaking Galilean, but everybody heard their own tongue. Verse 8, and they heard their own tongue in verse number 11. All these people from all these other places, but they heard their own language speak out of one man's mouth. So tongues was a language to the Jews that were gathered there. What happens over here? Multitudes of them get saved. Amen. Multitudes of them. Amen. Listen to this right here. Acts chapter number 4. Uh, I, was, I meant to read you this note. Uh, Dr. Rummer's got a good note on this in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, verse 22. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 14, 22, where the Jews require a sign and the, the tongue is a sign. He said this right here. It's a great note. He said, tongues are a Jewish sign. 1 Corinthians 1, 22, right? In the three instances, we just looked at one of them in Acts chapter number 2. We'll look at the other ones in just a minute. The tongues appear in the book of Acts. There were Jews present who did not believe something. Why? Because it's for unbelievers, right? In Acts 2, verse 14, there were a bunch of Jews who didn't believe Jesus was their Messiah. That's what Acts chapter 2 is always speaking about. Look what Peter said in Acts 2, 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hear, hearken to my words. And he begins to preach to those Jews how they rejected their Messiah and how they needed to be saved. It was tongues that got their attention, the Jews that required the sign that these unbelievers would hear their own language and hear the gospel that he was preaching in Acts 2 and be saved. That's what it was for. Amen. That It all lines up. So he's preaching that gospel there. He's giving them that truth. Listen to this right here. He said, he goes on to say, so the first instance, Acts chapter number 2, they spoke. Acts chapter 10, which is the next one. You can turn there. We'll look at that one. There's a bunch of Gentiles speaking with tongues. Gentiles are doing it this time because there were saved Jews present 
who didn't believe God was going to save Gentiles. So, he, so in Acts chapter number 10, there's Gentiles that speak in tongues. It wasn't Jews that speak in tongues, but it was for the Jews that were there that didn't believe God was going to save Gentiles. It all lines up who it's for. Amen. Acts chapter 19 is the third one. God allowed a bunch of Jewish disciples of John the Baptist to speak in tongues under their conversion because they didn't believe on Jesus before Paul preached to them because they had never heard about Jesus. Amen. So let's look at the second one here. And we'll, we'll show you all of them. Acts chapter number 10. Acts chapter number 10. The second instance of tongues. The first one was in Acts 2. Jews were there. Unbelievers were there. They heard their own language. Tongues was a language. It wasn't even a jibber and a jabber. And some people say, that's blasphemy to speak like that. No, just read your Bible. God makes it clear what the tongue is. He tells you what it's for, who it's for, what it's for, and who requires it. And why they require it, because God started them with it. And it's a language. That's all Bibles all we've looked at. And so these unbelievers, the first one, Acts chapter number 2, the language for the Jews. Acts chapter number 10, the Jews there, here's Gentiles speaking tongues. It's Cornelius. It's the one that, back over here, Acts 10. I saw I wrote 11 up here, didn't I? Earlier. That ain't 10. Remember when I said when Peter got revealed to him what God done? That was Acts 10, not 11. Somebody probably already commented and said, hey, you don't even know what chapter that is. Okay, it's Acts 10. Amen. We was one off. Acts 10. Cornelius is over here. Cornelius is praying. He's a Gentile. He's a devout man. Matter of fact, God heard his prayers and he wasn't even saved. They would say, oh, God, don't hear a lost man's prayers. Well, he did right here. This man sincerely sought God, and God heard it, and God went down there and gave Peter the vision to go down there and tell him about God. So be careful what you say. God don't hear a sinner's prayer, lost man's prayer, you know. And here's the lost man, clearly lost, but he was a devout guy, lived right, wanted God. Hey, if you want God, God wants you, and God will make a way. So here's Cornelius down there. He's praying. God sends a vision to Peter. And says, I want you to, and he, then he says, Cornelius to send down there to Peter. Now look, Peter comes back. Acts chapter 10, look at verse 44. You can go back and read the story of what happened there. Peter's that Jewish apostle. He's come down to the preach to this Gentile. Acts 10, the Gentile. Now this time, it's going to be a Gentile that speaks in tongues. Look in Acts 10, 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, that will be the Jews, which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, how did these Jews know the gift of the Holy Ghost was given to Gentiles? Look at it. Read verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be, be, be baptized? So they believed, they spoke in tongues, and then they got baptized. Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Look, verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So here's the second instance of tongues. This one was Gentiles. Why did the Gentiles, well, it's, well, I thought you said this tongues was for the Jews. Correct. The tongue is a sign required by the Jews. It's for unbelievers. All those are correct. All those scenarios are here again. But this time it was a Gentile that got saved, that spoke in tongues, so the unbelieving Jew could realize that God's saving Gentiles just like he's doing Jews. It all lines up with what God required. The first one was for Jews over there that were gathered all around. They heard their own language. These bunch of people got saved that they believed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. The second instance is a Gentile that speaks in tongues. But the reason why the Gentiles spoke in tongues, that the Jews were present, would realize that God was saving the Jew and the Gentile, which is what Peter had a problem with in the beginning of the book of Acts. That God revealed to him in Acts 10 and then demonstrated it right there at the end of that chapter by saving Cornelius and letting him speak in tongues. It all worked. They heard them speak in tongues. And what did they hear? They heard a language. Amen. What language did they hear? I don't know. But I'm assuming that they must have heard the language that them Jews spoke that came down there. Because they understood what they said and said, Hey, man, these guys got the Holy Ghost. I know because I hear them speaking in tongues. Now, here's the last one. The third one. Three instances of tongues. All of them are for Jews that require the sign. 
Amen. And unbelievers are present. And it's a language. Acts 19. It's amazing how the Bible will correct a lot of people's confusion about tongues. Acts 19. Look in verse number 1. The Bible said, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Go back. You've got to get the story here. Look, look in chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos. You see that? Chapter 18, verse 24. Born at Alexandria, and an eloquent man, and mighty in the Scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Here's an eloquent man, Apollos, but all he knows is the baptism of John. What's the baptism of John? Hey, get in this water and get baptized for your sins. That's all he knew. What was John? John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And God, God honored that if anybody got in John's water, God would reveal the Lamb to him. He promised that. Amen. And so here's a man that had been revealed by, he believed Moses' uh, 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 John's preaching, John the Baptist, he got in the water, and he's out there teaching everybody what John said. But he, that's all he knows. Look in verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. You know what they said to, to Apoll uh, Apollos? Hey, man, I like your spirit. Man, you're telling what John said. But hey, the Messiah's coming. He died. The one that John spoke about shed his blood. He made a way to heaven and he's the only way. They gave him the word of God more perfectly. And now Apollos has got a hold of this truth. Look at here. The Bible says, uh, verse number uh, 27, And when he was disposed to pass to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorted the disciples to receive him, that being Apollos, who when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So they got, he got that truth. It was revealed to him. Now look in chapter 19. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passing through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Look what they said. They said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what were ye baptized? And they say unto John's baptism. You know what they know? They know what Apollos knew. All they knew was the baptism of John. And G Paul said, Hey, you got the Holy Ghost? Man, we ain't even heard about the Holy Ghost. All we've been doing has been teaching what John taught. Get in the water and be baptized. Get your sins cleansed. And Paul comes down there and begins to expound to them more perfectly. Who are they? They're Jews that are unbelievers. It matches again. Ain't it? What a coincidence. All they know is the baptism of John. They're unbelievers in the fact that they, they believed in John. But they had never believed on Christ. That's where their unbelief was, was in Christ. So what does he do? Look. The Bible said in verse 3, And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptism with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, O Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about 12. The first instance, there's Jews. Unbelievers. They speak this language. And unbelievers hear the gospel and are saved. This is a Gentile that had Jews there that didn't believe that Gentiles could get saved. And so what happened? They spoke in tongues and it made it real to the Jews that God was saving the Gentiles. Now here's some Jews over here that were, did not believe on Jesus, but they believed on John. They meet the mold. Unbelievers. They get the sign that they believe. Now they have the Holy Ghost. All three instances where tongues are mentioned, it's a language, it's to an unbelieving Jew or a Gentile that tell the, show the Jews that uh, Gentiles got it or to show these Gen Jews here that the baptism of John wasn't enough. Christ is what finishes. All three of them got tongues.
So we see the transition. We see the terms. We see the things taught. It's by faith through grace. We see the tongues that are explained through the book of Acts. Today, there's only one. And this is where we'll stop. There's only one way to be saved today. Today. Amen. There's only one salvation that matches what Paul preached. It ain't the works. We've already seen that in Romans 1. It ain't works in faith. It's faith and grace only. Amen. Is a man saved today. That's what the Apostle Paul preached. Amen. There's only one way to be saved in the church age. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and we'll stop with these two passages. It's clear. You need to get these things settled before you begin to go through the book of Acts and begin to see these different accounts of how people are saved and why so many people are confused. Amen. Paul made it very clear. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 1. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 1. He says this, Moreover, brethren, he said, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have, also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now somebody say today, Christ died for your sins. Christ got it the third day, and He's the only way for you to be saved. He died, he, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. Look at this last passage in Ephesians chapter number 1. There's only one that matches Paul's gospel. It's the one, matter of fact, that was that Peter mentioned at this meeting in Acts 15. We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall be saved even as us. The Jews and the Gentiles get it the same way. It's by grace through faith, or faith and grace only, however you want to word it, back and forth, it works, amen. Look what Paul said in Philippians, uh, Ephesians chapter number 1. Great passage. Salvation, there's only one throughout the book of Acts. We'll see. I think there's seven different examples of how people are saved in the book of Acts and how they get the Holy Ghost, but there's only one that matches what Paul preaches. And it's the one that Peter said is how they get it. It's the one the Philippian jailer got. It's the one the Ethiopian eunuch got. It's the one that Paul got on the road to Damascus. It's by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he said it like this in Ephesians chapter number 1. Let me find it. Ephesians chapter number 1, uh, look in verse number 12. That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. How'd that happen? In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession and the praise of His glory. You'll see throughout the book of Acts, people believed. They got baptized, spoke in tongues. Got, they believed, got baptized and didn't speak in tongues. Then they believed, uh, had hands laid on them and spoke in tongues. Then there's some that believed and later got down in the water and showed a testimony to this world that God had saved them. Out of all the different examples, the only ones that matched the Apostle Paul is what he said. When you get saved, the Holy Ghost moved inside of you. They, nobody need to lay a hand on you. You didn't need to speak in any tongue when you trusted that gospel of your salvation, how that he died for your sins and was buried and rose again the third day. God came into your heart, saved you, baptized you into the Spirit of God, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and sealed you to the day of redemption. That's what he said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Grieve not, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption. There's only one that matches Paul. There's several examples we'll look at next time and begin to break them down individually, but these are the foundational rules you need to remember that God turned. It's a transitional book. These three major ways that were discussed in that salvation meeting, it settled it was by grace through faith. Amen. And the tongues is for the Jews and the signs for the Jews. Amen. Of the tongues. But there's only one salvation that matches Paul, even though there's seven different scenarios at least Will somebody get saved and how it works? And we'll look at them individually, amen. Lord, thank you for your book. God, I pray that you'd help us to study to show ourselves approved. Bless their Lord, your students and those in the class and those online to grow in grace and please you with our lives. Help us not to be confused with all the drama and the so-called signs and wonders and tongues and first and second and third blessings, God, but realize that there's only one blessing through salvation that God saves a sinner that will put his faith and trust in what you did on Calvary 
And baptism, just an outward testimony of what God done after he saved us, has nothing to connect connection with us getting the Holy Ghost or any kind of tongues or any matter of that way because that's for the Jews and not for us. So help us, dear Lord, to please you and be a witness in this old world. In Jesus' name, amen.